What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. In lieu of a stream I thought I would make sure that we get uh, at least a little bit of gameplay up today and I've got a really exciting deck. So yesterday we obviously played around with uh, the Prismari style deck, uh, playing a lot with treasure tokens, things like that. Today I thought we'd go the control route and throw in a little bit of white and test some things out. Uh, the, the reason for this is actually twofold. One, my fav one of my favorite new sorceries of the set is Rip Apart. I think this card is wickedly good. Uh, the fact that it's so flexible hits creatures or planeswalkers or artifacts or enchantments uh, just makes it really, really efficient for only two mana. It is sorcery speed, which isn't necessarily the best, especially in that control shell, but in the early turns of this deck, uh, we have a lot of other things that we get to leave up and just get to throw these in uh, only as a two of just to make sure that we're not overdoing it. But I did want to at least give this card a shot. The other card that I really wanted to try out was Velomachus. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, the Lorehold Elder Dragon, which is just absolutely fantastic. This card is ridiculous. Seven mana for a five five for flying vigilance and haste. Uh, and essentially every time it attacks, you get to look at the top seven cards and play an instant or sorcery for free that's less than, uh, the, that the CMC is less than the power of Lorehold. Uh, which does mean we've got quite a bit of options because we've got a lot of the adventure mechanic in the deck still. Brazen Borrowers, Bone Crusher Giants. We've got Expressive Iteration, one of my favorite new cards as well. Uh, just super efficient, get to see three cards for two mana uh, and get to kind of play them in any way that you see fit, which is just ridiculous. I will say this card uh, you generally don't want to play on turn two. A lot of times you do want to play it on turn three because if you can get a land off of it, it's essentially a free land drop without having to take one from your hand, so it just makes things a lot easier. Uh, Prismari Command, uh, one of my favorite commands, I think, in this new set. Uh, I absolutely love this card. Two damage to anything. Uh, draw two cards, discard two cards, which is great. Create a treasure token to help ramp us or destroy target artifact. Again, just having a lot of this tech between Rip Apart and Prismari Command just allows those outs. Uh, you know, if they Banishing Light, we've got Rip Apart. If they're the big black artifact deck, we've got the the destroy artifacts like crazy in this deck so we just have a lot of ways to deal with stuff uh which i really really like uh saw it coming is in here because it's just a fantastic card and i do have sublime epiphany in here as a four of i love this card this is one of my favorites it's sort of like a, a beefed up cryptic command uh for standard uh you get to choose from any one of these counter a spell an activator trigger ability uh, return a non-land permanent to its owner sand, create a token that's a copy of a creature you control, which generally will be a brazen borrower or a bone crusher giant, despite that two damage. Uh, and then you get to draw a card. So generally you're at least gonna do two or three of these things, but it's some occasionally uh, you, you are able to do you know even more, uh, which is just fantastic. Uh, we do have the standard Seagate Restoration with Shatter Skull Smashing Package for some extra lands, but some also, you know, some nice tech. Uh, we've got sweepers for a lot of those early game decks. There's still a lot of those running around, maybe more than ever. Uh, does great against rogues, does great against the mono red decks, the mono white decks, things like that. Uh, and then I also have two of Narset here, uh, a card that has not necessarily fallen out of favor. I just haven't seen necessarily quite as much. Uh, and so I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, this is my own build. I don't know if it's great or not. We're going to try that out, uh, but I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I have play tested a decent amount, uh, I will say. And so far, it's been really, really good. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. Um, I just had a match up against, uh, what was it? I think it was just Mono White, uh, the seasoned Hollow Blade deck. Uh, that was a little bit tricky. Uh, we had them down to lethal the following turn, but we couldn't quite get there, unfortunately. And that's okay, it happens. So, uh, do we keep this hand? I think the answer is yes. We can play this Snarl on turn one tapped, and it doesn't really hurt us. And then turn two, we've obviously got some options. So, uh, we will follow that up. Uh, I think the plan, depending on what they do uh, and what we draw, will be to play both of these on blue to leave up the Saw It coming. It looks like Rogues is the build here. Uh, with that in mind, we may actually want to express a iteration just to see if we can hit that Shatter the Sky. Um, because again, Shatter the Sky is really one of the key cards in this matchup. Uh, this is a Luris deck, so we do have to be careful of that as well. Uh, but we will see. Okay, uh, well, this does prolong our decision making if we would like to. 
Uh, so I'm kind of in for that. The other option would be just to play the pathway uh, in case we do draw a snarl. I think I actually like that better. So let's do that. I very much expecting the flash creature to come out here. Uh, yep. In which case, hmm. Do we want to bounce that? Uh, I don't think so. I think we just want to bounce the Soaring Thought Thief potentially uh, on attacks, but we'll see. Uh, that Soaring Thought Thief is highly annoying. <laughs> uh, and again, really, we just want to hit that uh, that Shatter the Sky at this point, uh, which does mean, you know, maybe bouncing is not the best idea. Maybe we should have just foretold there, uh, which is a distinct possibility. I am going to take the opportunity to bounce because they did tap out for the Lurus, uh, which just means that they're not going to be flashing that in anytime soon uh, and hopefully eases up a little bit. And there is the Snarl. That was... Pretty good. Um, so what do we want to do? We have options. Uh, we're not under a huge amount of pressure, so we could just leave up to saw it coming. I ac actually think that's the way I want to go. Uh, just on the off chance that they um, they uh, decide to go for the Lurus, I'd like to counter it on the way down. If they don't, that's OK, but we, uh, we will have an answer hopefully at that point anyway. Uh, so we'll see what they go for. Rogues is always a tricky matchup. It's a very frustrating matchup, as I know a lot of you guys know. Uh, and if they just do nothing, worth noting, we do have the Brazen Bar where we just get to flash in here, uh, which I would imagine if they do nothing, they have a counter spell, but we're going to try. I'd rather them counter that than, you know, some big spell on our end. Okay, so there is the Soaring Thought Thief. Um, I think I do just want to counter this. I think we're in a position right now where just countering basically anything is okay, uh, given their mana constraint. They now only have one black mana, which means no counter spells this turn. Um, and I am going to first expressive iteration here. Let's see what we get. Uh, throw that in the hand for sure. Um, we'll put this on the bottom and we'll throw this, uh, which just means we're going to end up playing that this turn. Uh, not going to play a land so we can leave up the Brazen Borrower and we'll just pass. Nice and simple. Uh, chances are the Lurus is coming down this turn, uh, given that we we burned the Solid coming and they know we don't have three mana up at this point, uh, which is okay. That's fine. And there it is. Uh, so let's see, first of all, what's in their graveyard. It's the Soaring Thought Thief. Um, so I think... We first let this resolve. How many cards are in our... Okay, so... With that in mind, I'm going to bounce the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Um, that just keeps us from getting milled this turn. And there's the Bone Crusher Giant. That's actually hugely beneficial here. Um, so, let's go ahead. Let's play this White Land. That just gives us the option of Shatter the Sky later on. Uh, then... What we really want to do is tap these two. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that Lurus. Um, that's not a card I particularly want to deal with. Uh, and so finding a way to kill it early is usually a good idea. Um, here we can counter something uh, if they decide to do something. The other option is just to flash out the Brazen Borrower um, and try and block here. I kind of wanted to. I, I kind of want to try that. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know that. I mean, the Thieves Guild Enforcer. There's a lot of cards that they could have that would be very frustrating. Um, but I think trying to flash this out first is going to be the best thing to do. Um, sure. Okay. Clever. Um, so they did get that. Ah. Okay. Interesting tech that they have. Suffocating Fumes, did not expect that, uh, but hey, you got it. Uh, okay, so what do we need to do here? Um, we do need to get some creatures down, uh, realistically. Uh, the Sublime Epiphany is much better if we do have some creatures down. Um, so what I am proposing is we play the Bone Crusher Giant, leave up Brazen Borrower, and saw it coming. Uh, and then that way, depending on what they decide to do, we can kind of react as needed. Uh, they do have, with the Thieves Guild Enforcer, that's a, that's a tough one. 
um, just because it does have that death touch. Uh, so we'll we'll see what they do here. If they attack with it, I'm definitely blocking. Um, no problem at all. Okay. Let's try flashing this out. Um, I'm guessing they've got some kind of counter or something here, but let's burn it before we run out our own. Um, there it is, the Drown in the Lock. Perfectly fine. Uh, they could have used that to kill the Bone Crusher Giant then, so I'm actually pretty glad that we did that. And they may have something else here. Oh, okay. They get to refill their hand, which is great for them. Uh, but, crucially, we do have that Sublime Epiphany plus the Solid coming later on, so... Hopefully, at least, we can do something here. Uh, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? So we do have the, so the Prismari command with the Solid coming in the same turn, which is quite nice. I'm going to play the, the Trium here, and I am going to pass. We'll see how this goes. Uh, the Ruin Crab is a bit scary. Honestly, that's just a very frustrating card to deal with. Huh. Um... I hate say saying I'm going to counter a Ruin Crab, but I think I am. Um, we really, really, really need to draw a Shatter the Sky. Um, that is very crucial for us at this point. One has hit the bin. Okay. Um, in that case, we let this resolve, I believe. They must just have one of these cards must be a land. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh no, there was the Shadow of the Sky. Uh, okay. Let's hope we can get one. Um, I'm waiting to see if there's a better option to hit with the Prismari command other than just them. Um, that's not the best of possibilities, so, you know. This rogues list is a tricky one. It is a very tricky one to deal with. Uh, crucially, because the Prismari command, uh, while a great card in my opinion, doesn't do as much against them. It does hit the uh, the Thieves Guild Enforcer, which is a crucial one, but that's really the best of it. Uh, and Luris, I should say, and Luris, uh, but that's really it. Okay. So let's do this. Let's draw two and create a treasure. Let's just see what happens. Uh, they may even counter this. I have no idea. Um, but we really just have to draw a shatter this guy. We have to deal with this board. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think we discard. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we, hmm, it doesn't seem great, um, but I think we'll do it. They're down to two cards in hand. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't love this. I really don't. Um, and they could just have a counter here, in which case we're pretty dead regardless. Um, we really don't even have to do it for this much, I guess, but. Uh, let's hit. I guess. Sure. Why not? Didn't really have to do that, but. All right. Let's try. Please don't counter. <laughs> oh my goodness. They have everything. They're just hitting on curve, like... Being able to draw four there is so good. Uh, so they are just hitting it perfectly. There's another Ruin Crab. I assume that means they're going to be able to mill for at least six. Um, yeah, I think this is... We're not losing the damage race necessarily. I mean, we are, but we're not necessarily behind too much there. The, the trick is we've got 17 cards in our deck, uh, and there's very little we can do. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think it's just Shadow of the Sky or nothing, so... <laughs> uh, crucially, I think we still have a couple of Shadow of the Skies in here. Oh, nope, there went one. 
Okay, there's the last one. All right, we're just going to concede. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, we could not get there against Amir Rogues. That's always a tricky matchup, no doubt about it. Uh, the fact that it gets those aggro elements along with the interaction with the counter spells, the drown in the locks, the draw, like that deck really is just a frustrating, very difficult deck to deal with. Uh, so let's move on. Let's hope we get something a little less, uh, we'll say all round than rogues and just see how it goes. Um, also, guys, I just want to say a huge thank you for everybody who is watching our gameplay and watching our other content. If you have not uh, checked out our digital altar videos, those are really, really, really fun to make. Uh, I do hope that you guys have been enjoying those because I think, um, you know, they're they're different. I know that they're different. I know that they're uh, maybe not uh, what you expect, um, but I think that they're really fun. Uh, and as long as they're fun, that's kind of the goal. Um, Interesting start here, uh, to be honest. Um, I think we actually go with this. Turn two, we play the planes and then foretell the solid coming, and then that way the following turn we still leave up that counter spell despite having a tapped land. I think that's the best option. Uh, unfortunately, if this was any other untapped land other than a planes, we would have had a little more freedom to do what we want here, but uh, unfortunately we didn't. The positive news is we do have the Shatter the Sky against this deck, which is a good one to have until they get the enchantment down, which may come this turn. Uh, this this is a very crucial turn for this deck, and so I'm really hoping they don't have it. Oh, they do. Okay. Um, well, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, we could... Well, no, we can't this turn, I suppose. Uh, I think we just play this out. Uh, that gives Prismari Command an option uh, for us, and then we will see what happens here. Um, the Rip Apart is very, very good against this deck, um, but very crucially, we don't have it at the moment. So uh, we could try and draw two and discard two, uh, which is a option. I think I'd take the damage first, though, because we can saw it coming something on the way down uh, post-combat. Our life total is not as crucial uh, until the last moment, so I'm not as worried about taking too much damage right this second. Little worried about the long term with the Bastion, of course, but uh, we'll do the best we can here. If crucially, if they have a second Bastion, we just die. <laughs> so like, I have to, I have to make sure that we can at least do this. Um, so let's deal to and create a treasure, I believe, and we're just going to go ahead and do this. I don't love this play, I'll be honest, but uh, we'll we'll do the best we can here. They could have another village rights as well and just be able to sacrifice something else. Um, crucially, this also makes Shatter the Sky not that exciting this turn, um, but we do have another Prismari command. We've got other options, of course, so... Uh, I'm not terribly concerned about that. They did have another land. Please don't have another Bastion. That's the only trick. Okay. That's good. Not great. Um, so, we can do a couple of different things here. We can go for the Expressive Iteration, um, which would see us a, a good number of cards here, potentially a rip apart as well, which could be very helpful to deal with that Bastion. Uh, worst case scenario, we still have lands in our hand uh, and a solid coming up. So I think we're going to do this. Can we get the rip apart? That would be amazing. Uh, to deal with this Bastion, that is so clutch. Uh, Raisin Borrower does something here. Um, so I do think we take that. Obviously put that in our library. We're not going to be using it anytime soon. Uh, and I think we just play the land. This leaves up Solid Coming and Brazen Borrower, um, which I think is at least something to to push this Bastion off, maybe. Uh, we might be able to bounce it at some point. Hmm. I could counter. I actually kind of like the counter. It means they don't draw any cards, which I think is kind of important. Um, they still get to learn, which is frustrating. 
Uh, we'll see. We will see. I may not be playing this perfectly either. This is one of those uh, combo decks that has recently come out thanks to a lot of the new Witherbloom cards, uh, and they're extraordinarily powerful, so... Dealing two to us, that's fine. Um... So this leaves up Brazen Borrower plus Prismari Command. Uh, we could shatter this guy here, um, which would put us down to like one. <laughs> um, do we want to do that? They also have one mana up. Oh, next turn would be such a better turn to do that, but we just can't. Um, the other option would be to do this Prismari command that, or, or uh, this. I'm going to take this route, and we'll see if this actually works. This seems really not the best, but we're going to try it. <laughs> uh, deal two damage. We're going to hit here. We're going to get the treasure. <clears throat> All right. I'm being proactive. I know that they can just replay this. Um, I wish that we still had a counter up, but even then we wouldn't have been able to. We do have the Sublime Epiphany, um, but... Ugh, I just don't think we're we're gonna do it this game either, guys. <clears throat> yep, there we go. We just lose. Man, <clears throat> what a great car or, or a great deck. That's one that I do want to try out very soon. Uh, so we will give it a shot at some point. That's the the tricky one too, I think, for this matchup because while we do have the answer, we could have shattered at any time. But the reality is, we would have lost quite a bit of life in that process. So. I think that's a tricky one. Uh, but regardless, two losses for us today. Let's go ahead and jump into a third game. We'll see how far we can go with this deck. Uh, I don't know exactly how long we'll go, <clears throat> but it'll be a fun time regardless. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, guys, if you do enjoy these gameplay videos, if you enjoy any of our videos, uh, I'm, I'm imploring you to please share them with your friends. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It does mean a lot to us to have uh, just such great support all over but uh growing our <clears throat> our community and our following is obviously very important to the the long-term success of the channel uh and so if that's something you are uh interested in doing we would greatly greatly appreciate it uh i'm just gonna foretell the solid coming um looks like this is gonna be mono red uh potentially or big red one of the two um in that case, hmm. Part of me wants to express iteration. The other part of me wants to wait. Uh, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna. We we have the solid coming. We also have a next uh, a really nice turn four play. Uh, so I'm not really in a rush to to fire that thing off. Um, I'd rather just be able to kind of counter whatever. Oh. Okay. Uh, apparently it's just a slow start, <clears throat> which is great, uh, <laughs> for us. Um, in that case, yeah, we'll just play Narset. Um, we'll just gain some life here. Uh, any amount of life gain is obviously quite helpful against a deck like this. Uh, if this is just a bunch of Bolt Hounds, I mean, Narset's gonna take a hit here, but it's kind of okay. Uh, we should be able to outpower. Okay. Uh, very good card, for sure. Uh, this is a situation where expressive iteration is... Well, we could just deal with the Tor brand as well, but let's let's expressive iteration first. Uh, definitely going to put Shatter in the hand and play... I think we just put this in the deck, have Brazen Borrower up. Um, honestly, this is just convenient because we just get to bounce it. <laughs> Um, and I am all too happy to do that right now. We could have waited till their turn, I guess. That would have been better, but it's fine. Let's gain a little bit of life, and we'll pass. Uh, technically, we can just start... I mean, we could ultimate Narset this this coming turn if we want, so, like, that seems pretty good. Um, they could just Frostbite... Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, but they couldn't kill it, um... 
so what do we want to do this turn? Uh, we're definitely going to play the land. We're definitely going to do this. I'm going to add a white, and I think we just shatter. And then leave up uh, Brazen Borrower or Prismari Command. I think that's pretty good. Uh, they If they have Frostbite, that sucks because it does take Narset out, but we've gained a lot of life off of Narset. Um, ooh. So this is an interesting option, um, and I think I like this option. So we're actually going to deal two damage to our own creature, or our own Planeswalker, excuse me. Um, let's hit here. Target a player, us. What this does is fizzle the Bone Crusher Giant, unless they have another one. Uh, but either way, it's going to fizzle the first. So it just means they don't get to play the Bone Crusher Giant now. Uh, love that that hits any target. That is helpful. This also does get us closer to the lore hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In fact, we have it. Uh, so that seems really good. <laughs> um, and once we get this down, chances are they don't have a whole lot, at least, that can deal with it. So let's go ahead, throw it out there. We also get a free spell, potentially, off of it. Uh, looks like we do. I'm just going to take the Bone Crusher and hit them with it. Uh, the other option is the Expressive Iteration, which is certainly a very good card and would draw us into more stuff. But I think we kind of have some of the tools that we need here. The, the trick for us is just going to be to finalize the game. Hey, we got a follower while we're recording. <laughs> Thank you so much to our new follower. Uh, Mill Council, I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, so we just attack again. Um, in response to anything that they do, we have the Sublime Epiphany, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, we can bounce a thing. Let's bounce the Torbrand. Uh, just slows them down tremendously. This this deck rips apart uh, <laughs> mono red. My goodness, no joke, no pun intended. I guess rip apart. I didn't even think about that. That was accidental. All right, so now we just leave up the Sublime Epiphany. Obviously, can't copy uh, Lorehold, which is a bit of a a setback. But uh, being able to counter like the Torbrand on the way back down is just huge. Uh, sure. Uh, they're probably baiting us into a block here. Uh, if they would like to, they certainly could. But if they just play anything... Okay. <clears throat> We're obviously not going to block. The worst case scenario is we take four damage. We do have the Sublime Epiphany if we wanted it, but... Let's do this. Counter spell. Return. Uh, no, not return. Um, and draw. It's a non-land permanent. This is still technically a land, so could have been a free block for us, but honestly, it just doesn't matter. Um, and we'll go ahead and flash this out just because we can. Because what I always say is if you can finish the game, you should finish the game. So we're going to do that. Uh, decline. We don't really need to play anything. And there we go. That was a nice clean win against Mono Red, and I think what we will do is we will play one final game. Hey, we ranked up. Uh, we'll play one final game with this deck. Uh, I really do enjoy this list. I think it needs some fine tuning. This is, again, my preliminary list, but I do really, really like it. Uh, I love the idea of control in uh, this current meta. I also just love the, uh, the impact that this deck has because what, what control decks love is flexibility. And I think with the new Strixhaven cards, we have so much flexibility that, uh, I mean, it's a playground for control players, in my opinion. So we've got a long way to go, obviously, to make this really, really good. But great start to the hand. Uh, looks like a Yorian deck, which Rip Apart should be able to hit at least an enchantment of, of some kind there, which is quite nice. Uh, Brazen Borrower, obviously pretty good against it. <clears throat> we'll take the opportunity to play the tap to land uh, and then be able to leave up either of these at some point. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Um, I'm just going to take the opportunity to foretell the solid coming. Um, while it's not a huge benefit, this deck doesn't necessarily do a ton in the early game. Uh, it might play, a, you know, the 
Well, there we go. That was exactly what I was thinking, and I couldn't think of the <laughs> the word. But uh, but that's okay. That's not the end of the world. <coughs> um, let's express a iteration. I think I'm gonna take some time to just set up here. Uh, let's take you in the hand, put you on the bottom, and unfortunately, that's gonna be a lost expressive iteration. But that's okay. <coughs> Uh, taking the blue here, giving us that double blue just opens up Brazen Borrower next turn, uh, or really whenever. Um, we do need second white for the Shatter at some point. We're not really in a rush for Shatter. Um, the Rip Apart probably is going to be more helpful. Uh, we can kill the, the Haven with it if we would like. Okay. Uh, unfortunately not hitting lands here, which is a bit frustrating, but, uh, we do have the solid coming in the back. I honestly think the play is just to wait. Uh, at the end of their turn, we can always Prismari command, uh, dealing two or drawing two, and then maybe creating a treasure just to give us that ramp. Um, <clears throat> but here they, they could honestly just play Yorian and it's not a bad turn. Um, sure. Okay. So let's create a treasure and draw two. And again, this just gives them something to answer. If they don't, that's obviously a bit of a problem for them. Uh, what do we want to throw back? I think it's Shatter is at least one of them. Uh, and it might be just another Brazen Borrower here. And that got us our land and gave us an extra treasure here, which is fantastic. Uh, they do have some counter stuff up. Um, so let's do this. Let's express a iteration. We're going to put this in our hand. We are going to... Doesn't really matter which one we play. Put that one and that one. We are going to throw that out. And I think we're just going to pass. We've got Solid coming available. <clears throat> Um, trying to be really, really, uh, intentional with our plays here. This could be a very long game. I want to make sure that we are setting ourselves up and they just did nothing for a turn. That's pretty huge, honestly. Um, I am going to flash out the Brazen Borrower. Let's start trying to pressure. I guarantee you they have a kill spell for this. <laughs> Um, but we are going to throw this out there just to see what they do. And there is that kill spell. That's totally fine. Uh, not a problem. Uh, let's play the land. Again, we could rip apart the Wolf Willow Haven. Uh, is that something we're interested in doing? I think maybe so. Um, let's just go ahead and get rid of it. Again, we still get to leave up the counter, so it's okay. Uh, it's not great, but <clears throat> it just gets something off the field on their side. Um, and I'm not going to counter this. We're going to counter the big stuff that they want to do. The, the, the key here is that they haven't been able to capitalize on the Yorian. Now, they may, uh, they may be able to get something really big down here, but we have got quite a bit in terms of interaction right now that uh, should be able to deal with it. There's another Haven, that's fine. Obviously not gonna counter that. Cultivate, sure. Um, this is a big do nothing game until it's all gonna happen and it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> um, <clears throat> got plenty of land, my goodness. Uh, hmm. Do we want to Prismari command here? There is a world where we should. <laughs> Um, I'm going to hold off though. Uh, that may be incorrect. I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I am going to hold off here. Um, play for the blue and we just pass. I mean, they know that we have a counter. That's why they're holding off on doing anything huge. Uh, but the trick is the only really big thing. Oh, Kiora best the sea god, huh? Um, We're going to take the Foretold Saw It Coming. Uh, this leaves up the most mana for us. Okay. 
Certainly a scary card, but thankfully we do have plenty of answers uh, realistically here, so that's not a huge problem. Uh, and I think we just hold up. Again, we're not in a position where we have to do anything. Um, we are in a, a really solid position in terms of interaction, so I'm going to take the advantage. Tibalt, huh? Just gonna saw it coming. <laughs> um, crucially, they don't have a ton of mana left open here, so I think we're we're in okay positions. Uh, yeah, and we just keep drawing land. <laughs> it's a little unfortunate, honestly. Um, it'd be good to get like a lore hold or something kind of big here. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're just gonna keep doing it. Um, <laughs> and we got another land yay um unfortunately our deck is letting us down slightly in terms of just drawing a bunch of lands but it is what it is uh they i assume just play the haven again yeah there's the brazen borrower um i think in this instance we're gonna cycle and we are out of counters at this point i'm sure that they know that um we'll let that enter tapped and we pass. So this is really their opportunity, and I'm sure that they know, uh, given that we did tap some mana here. Instead, they're just going to cultivate. Interesting. They may just not have a lot. I mean, we countered like three really big things in a row. They still have the Yorian um, and one unknown, which is a bit scary, but... Uh, you know what? I'm going to Brazen Borrower. Given that they have one unknown, we need to start pressuring. Nobody has done damage yet, <laughs> which is amazing to me. Um, so let's attack in. I am going to cycle this now on the off chance we get something like a land. <clears throat> so now again, they can just play the Yorian and... Interesting. Okay. Um... Sure. Yep. You got it. Oh my goodness. Um, again, we've just drawn so many lands, it's ridiculous. Uh, we don't even have that many. For a, for a control deck, we're a bit light on the land side of things, so I think that that's kind of interesting. <coughs> um, I've also noticed a bit of a bug with the Snarls. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but every time I play one, there's this really long check that seems to happen, uh, and I don't really know why. I can't even, like... I I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. Um, bug? Bug report? Let's, let's, let's figure this one out. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have seen uh, this issue, because it's certainly been a prominent one for me. <clears throat> I mean, I, I can't do anything. <laughs> if I hit enter, nothing. Pass turn, nothing. Oh, that might be the problem. Are we back? Okay. I don't know what, I don't know where we're at in this. I hit next, in turn. I have no clue what just happened. That was really weird. Uh, sorry, guys. It just like ran through a bunch of the animations again. That was weird. We're gonna cycle, sure. Play land. They're playing very conservatively without playing the Yorian, um, which I think is smart. We do have the Shatter the Sky to deal with it, but... And there it is, guys. The Yorian has arrived. Let's go ahead. They're going to blow up nothing, because uh, we don't have a non-land permanent for them to blow up. Um, which is fine by me. It just wastes the uh, the binding, uh, which is great. There is Narset as well. Now, Narset's quite good. Um, we're going to Shatter. 
Maybe should have played the Narset first, actually. That might have been a slight mistake, but... Uh, oh, wow. And crucially, we can't do both. Oh, yeah, we don't have enough white. <laughs> Fair enough. You got us. All right. Well, here we are. Hopefully this works. Uh, why did it tap both white? Oh, it had to. Duh, it shattered the sky. I'm smart. Uh, all right, let's play Narset. I'm just going to plus up uh, for a white, I suppose, uh, and then pass. Narset on her own does not necessarily win us the game, but uh, if we do get to Emblem, we can do quite a bit. Uh, that's frustrating, though. Um, so what can we do? Not very much, to be brutally honest. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they just get it. Uh, I was hoping that that would be a relatively safe position uh, to throw out the Narset, given the lack of cards in hand, but it is what it is. We've just been answering each other's stuff the entire time. Uh, Sultai versus Jeskai, and look at it going. Um, obviously, their deck is much bigger. They've got a lot more potent threats than we do. Uh, so at this point, I'm just hoping for a lore hold. Um, and honestly, at this point, what we probably just need to do is draw two. I'm going to deal two here. Because we just kind of need to do stuff. Um, let's iteration. That's going into our hand. Uh, that's going into our deck. And we take the Prismari command. Um, just going to keep doing it. <laughs> we got nothing else to do. Uh, target them. <clears throat> okay. Um, Brazen Borrower, and I guess saw it coming. As much as I would love to keep the saw it coming, just for the simple fact that it it does answer their stuff, um, we just can't do it. Why? We had the mana. I wonder why. Ooh, and that's why we should have taken the saw it coming. But it is what it is. <clears throat> sure. Worth noting, we dealt quite a bit of damage last turn, though. Look at us. We have a Bone Crusher Giant. Honestly, we shouldn't have played the land, but I think at this point it doesn't matter. This is an interesting game, though. This has just been answer after answer. Um, man, crazy, crazy. Uh, I love this deck. I love both of these decks. I think they're both very, very good. Sultai is hugely powerful, as always. Uh, and they don't even... I haven't even really seen anything new that they have put into their deck at this point. Um, this is all just the standard Sultai list. Um, but Vorinclex obviously huge. Uh, there's the Omen. Look how many lands we both have. I mean, they have way more. One top, one bottom, and then they draw another Omen. Sure. Two bottom. They're just looking for a, another way to end the game at this point. Wow, three omens. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. There's the emergence ultimatum. Uh, yeah. So we get to shuffle one into their deck. I mean, it's just, it's got to be the epiphany, because otherwise we lose on the spot. Um, I mean, we kind of lose on the spot regardless, but... It is what it is. I think at least this gives us a turn. <clears throat> so what is a live draw for us? Not a lot. I mean, they... Yeah, we just die here with Professor Onyx, I think. So this is the only new card I've seen yet. And there we go, guys. Man, what a game that had been. Uh, what a crazy game. Anyway, all this to say, I know we didn't do necessarily a great showing here today of this list. I want to I want to task it to you guys to see what you can come up with. Play around with this list. It is down below in the description. I do appreciate everybody being so supportive lately. It means a lot. Uh, but I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Uh, reminder, just for everybody, I will be out of town this weekend, uh, which does mean, unfortunately, we probably won't have much content coming up over the next couple days. Uh, but I've tried to push out quite a bit of content over the last few, so I hope that that makes up for it. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it, and I will see you very soon in another gameplay video.